Hannah. I'm joining from the Richmond Hill Public Library, and I'm so pleased to welcome you to this evening's session. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Ancestral Voices, which is currently in its third year, amazing, uh, invites artists and authors representing diverse communities to discuss and celebrate, of course, our shared histories, our unique lived experiences, and own voices storytelling. Before, before we get into tonight's talk, I'd like to acknowledge the lens uh, that we are zooming in from in Mississauga, which constitute the present day city of Mississauga as being part of the treaty and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of uh, the Credit First Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat, and Wendate Nations. We recognize these peoples and their ancestors as peoples who inhabited these lands since time immemorial. The city of Mississauga is home to many global indigenous peoples. As a municipality, the city is actively working towards reconciliation by confronting our past and our present, providing space for indigenous peoples within their territory uh, to recognize and uphold their treaty rights and to support indigenous peoples. We formally recognize the Anishinaabe origins of our name and continue to make Mississauga a safe space for all Indigenous peoples. Now, in just a moment, we'll be joined by Ancestral Voices co-founder, Maxine Gordon Palomino, and our guest speakers for tonight, Pan Mordecai and Shani Mutu. I'll invite you all to submit your questions for them anytime using the chat box, which you'll find at the bottom right of the screen. But first, let me introduce our uh, guests. Pam Mordecai is the author of over 30 books, including textbooks, children's books, books of poetry, a reference work on Jamaica, a short story collection, and a novel. Her creative and critical writing appears in journals and major anthologies of Caribbean and African Canadian lit, and she is well known internationally for her children's poems. She has been a fellow at the prestigious Yaddo Artists Community and the recipient of Jamaica's first Vic Reed Award for YA Lit, and the Institute of Jamaica Centenary and Musgrave Medals. Her work has been shortlisted for the 2015 Rogers Writers Trust Fiction Award and long listed for the 2023 OCM BOCAS Prize. She's tuning in now from Toronto, uh, where she lives, and we're so uh, honored to have her with us. Shani Mutu is uh, um, a couple moments away, uh, but let me introduce her to you, and then hopefully we'll hear from her in a bit. She is an author and multimedia visual artist. Her first collection of short stories out on Main Street was published in 1993, beginning her literary career. Since then, her work has been shortlisted for the Scotiabank Giller Prize, the Ethel Wilson Fiction Prize, and the Chapters Books in Canada First Novel Award, and long listed for the Booker Prize. Shani was also awarded a Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa from Western U, and as a recipient of Lambda Literary's James Duggan's Outstanding Mid-Career Novelist Prize and the Writers' Trust Angle Finley Award. She was born in Ireland, grew up in Trinidad, and now lives in Southern Ontario. Pamela, I wanna thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Maxine, thank you for facilitating our talk. I know you, uh, you're both gonna get us started now, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass the stage. Thanks, Leo. Well, just have to say welcome again. Uh, it's good for you all to be joining us. Today is a little bittersweet for me because my father passed last week and he is the ins one of the inspirations behind Ancestral Voices. So I'm just gonna do a little one sentence about him just to you know, acknowledge his role in Ancestral Voices. So Major Harry Gordon retired. He was a man who broke barriers who through his work inspired many to be the best they could be, and a father who epitomized the oral tradition of storytelling. So just, that's just my moment, thank you. So let's go now to Pam. I think most of you would know that Pam has recently released the Book of Joseph, and I wonder if she would start with reading one or two of her favorite poems, if, all, if, if writers have favorite, poets have favorite poems of theirs. Um, over to you, Pam. 
Thanks, Maxi. Um, and I'm delighted to be here. And I um, maybe we could uh, sort of dedicate this this evening to your dad, um, the storyteller, the original storyteller, or one of the original storytellers in your family. Thank you. Um, I um, yeah, I, I kind of I'm not sure what to say about this book, except maybe that it is um, okay. It's part of a trilogy. It's part of um, a trilogy about the life and death of Jesus. Um, it's written entirely in Jamaican language, as are the other two books in the trilogy. The trilogy ought to go. The book of Joseph, obviously, the book of Joseph, because he's an older man when he marries Mary, or at least that's what tradition says. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, 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 that's not in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that he's an older man. But tradition, we always see him, you know, you see him in the mangers and so on. You have his beard and his gray beard and gray hair and so on. Um, so I wrote, I wrote the last book first because I'm perverse. Um, so <laughs> And this starts it is the book of Joseph and you know as I say he's an older man so he has to come before Mary then the book of Mary and then the man and the man is the crucifixion story I wrote the man first in 19 it was published in 1995 by the late great sister vision press um and I published the second book I maybe what 25 or 30 years later, um, the book of Mary came out in 2015. So that is, I think, 30 years. My head not so good these days. <laughs> um, and then that book of Joseph came quite quickly afterwards. So um, I always say this, if Martin was here, he would say, shut up, come and read the poem. So I'm going to read a poem towards the end of the book. I make up a lot of this book because a lot of, um, you know, there's not a lot about um, Joseph in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I give him a first wife. Her name is Deb. She's a spunky girl. Um, and I give him, um, I give him four kids. Uh, they're two little girls. Uh, he's, he's not lucky in marriage. Um, every time his first wife has a baby, she loses a baby. So she has a baby and loses a baby and has a baby and loses a baby and it's kind of um, distressing for Joseph. And so this poem, <laughs> I was trying to avoid reading it first, but it looks like I'm gonna have to. Um, this poem is a poem about what Joseph decides he he, he, he ought to do because, because um, every time Deb has a baby, she loses a baby. He's, he's already quarreled with God. I won't read you that poem. Um, I will read you this poem, which is what Joseph decides to do because Deborah is having a hard time with the babies. Deb's bad luck with born in baby, never change. When she lose her next one after Sarah, me beggar hold up little bit. Hold up? What Joe? It's not me to hold up. Is you or is me doing the holding down here? I do not recall ever holding you down, Debs. Seemed to me we did agree on any holding betwixt you and me. <laughs> Tartrude, may love have you in my belly, Joe, as she laughed like water jumping down the surface. She could be bad behave when she chose my Debbie. But Joseph, my spouse, must I now understand you telling me you desire a next plan? I am telling you, Debs, your body don't make from rock stone. Me love loving you more than life, but me rather not kill you with making baby. Joe, me tell you enough time. Me rather dead fat with a baby than live with a man me can't sleep with loving. And Debs push me down flat. So that's my naughty miss. <laughs> <laughs> um. I um I enjoyed myself writing this book and I was um I was reading something today about um uh, Tony Morrison and Jorge Luis Borges I don't know if that's the right way to say his name but anyway um they are two you know most 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 famous writers and they were saying that um your whole life 
is the basis for your stories. Um, anything that happens to you, whatever it is, good, bad, even indifferent, is a resource. Um, it's the raw material of your stories. Um, so I don't know if I was, well, I absolutely, yes, I was thinking, was I using my life as I, as I wrote these things? Um, I am absolutely using my life because um, Deb's pattern with babies is, is exactly mine. Mm -hmm. I, I lost a baby every time I had one, had one, lost one, had one, lost one. Um, and so, you know, even in, even in, I, I suppose, something like that, um, I, I am using, you know, my experience, I'm sure I'm not the only woman, but I'm the only woman that I know about. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm the obvious person to go to. Um, I, I enjoyed the trilogy because, because I made up stuff. I could make up a lot of things. Um, I could explore the events that the, um, that the Bible, the New Testament says took place. And maybe I'll read a poem that does that um in fact i i um i probably could recite it but i won't run the risk um <laughs> it's it's the story of the angel arriving to talk to mary and i think that I, we get such a such a such an inaccurate version of mary has been handed down i keep on saying it's because his men do it right <laughs> and probably mm -hmm. is because his men mm -hmm. do it but we get um an idea of her with her eyes rolling up to heaven, with a crown on her head, you know, with a fancy dress on, you know, all kinds of embroideries. That was not how Mary was at all, at all, at all. She was a little Jewish girl, and I think a really brave little Jewish girl, because all of a sudden one day, <laughs> I don't know where she was, um, they say she was out praying. I don't know that she was out praying, but anyway, Suddenly, this, this angel, not even angel, archangel, mm -hmm. arrives and is standing in front of her. Um, and so this is my version of the archangel Gabriel um, speaking to Mary. This poem is called Archangel Gabriel Speak to Mary. How did you, holy one? A voice sung all around like it come from deep down in the womb, in the tomb of a drum. Cold sweat wash me whole body, same time big fraid take me. I frighten and shake, hold my breath as I wait for the far up, far down, all round speaker to speak. Child, you fill up the eye of the great El Shaddai. Out of all womankind, the plain good of you quicken him heart. It look like you see him one is to have a star part. In a mystery play that him write a script for. So him send me across the deep black of sky, a few billion cubits, to ask you to be so good as to grant him urgent plea. When him talk, him voice beat like a hummingbird wing. Judge, I know, is not any small thing him require of you. That is why I am asking you down on my knees. Him say, make sure to ask so and ask if he please. So sweet lady, speaking for Elohim most high, I fly over to ask that you make a small fry, fingerling, a picnic that will wring every joy from the earth, every ache from your heart. Your belly going swell with Yeshua, God send of the world. What is your choice to make? Is your amen to say, I am Archangel, Axin. No mind them insist I am Gabriel announcing. These earth creatures who love to take things and twist to them suit. I'm who am over all. The great one who run things say is choose, you must choose. But for sure him would glad if you grant him the head and you send me back home with a yes. That is a very Jamaican archangel who says <laughs> or ask <laughs> yes so, um, so one of my questions Pam because it seems as if the Jamaican papa really helps the poem it, it helps to get the thought process out it, it could you do that 
in English, really. I couldn't do this in English. No. I suppose I could try to write a poem about um, the Archangel Gabriel speaking mm. to Mary. The, the, the truth is, Maxine, that I, I say this all the time. Um, I get at, I, at this stage in my life, and I'm now ancient, you know, you could put me in a museum. Um, at this <laughs> At this stage in my life, I'm not going to tell people how old I am, mm -hmm. but I'm old. Um, I am finding that Jamaican language, um, you would have thought maybe it would work the other way around, that I would be close to my language. And for us, for, uh, um, the longer I stayed away from my island, the further it would recede. The whole, it's the opposite entirely. Yes. Um, I find that. Jamaican language gives me stories. It gives me people. It usually gives me the people before it gives me the stories. Um, like the, the book of um, the, the Man, which is the first of the um, trilogy that I wrote, even though it is the last in the sequence, um, was in fact not written for the page. And it, it, it began with a single line which dropped into my head one day, um, on a semi-dying trial. Um, <laughs> that's a, it's an interesting line because Ono is Jamaican plural for you. You know that, and mm -hmm. any Creole speakers here know that too. Um, I don't use Ono when I write now because it would be a word that might be a challenge um, for audiences that are not Creole speaking. Um, I I say villages right village. Jurors write my books. They do. A whole village writes any book that I write. And mm -hmm. um, I, 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 my villagers don't all, mostly don't come from Jamaica anymore. Um, a lot of them are not Creole speakers. None of them have ever had a problem with any of these books. But I do modify Jamaican. I mean, it is not, not Jamaican because you know how Jamaican stay. We can talk really, really, really Creole and people now go mm -hmm. understand me. Or I can, you know, sort of bring it up a little bit and people will understand me. So, for instance, the book of Joseph um, in very Creole Creole would be called the Joseph book and the book of Mary mm -hmm. would be the Mary book. But mm -hmm. that is, again, a structure that's going to probably, I mean, the book of Joseph is not going to be a problem for anybody. The book of Mary isn't going to be a problem for anybody. Um, so I make that kind of adjustment, but I'm still really getting people first of all as i usually as i say usually the people come first the characters come first um i knew for instance that that first line on a semi-dying trial came out of the mouth of a woman not a young woman an older woman she would have had many dying trials in her life yeah. and i wonder whether in fact um the phrase dying trial doesn't refer to to the crucifixion i don't know i've never looked it up. I've never researched it. I've never talked to any of the, you know, Creole speakers, um, some of whom are very informed, who might be able to tell me. So maybe I'll ask that question. Um, but I, that, that's where I, that's the source, the resource. I mean, Tony Morrison <clears throat> and um, Senor Jorge, or I don't know how to say his name, Jorge. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe somebody, somebody can help me out. Um, but uh, in addition to your life, your life experience being um, the, the biggest resource for your stories, my language is also, my Jamaican language is also a very particular resource. Yes, yeah. I'm for Shani, where's Shani? Yes, so so everyone, you know, as you know, it should have been a Shani and Pam conversation. Shani had, is having a bit of a technical issue and we're still hoping that she will join us. But um, Pam is here doing well. Uh, the other thing I noticed, Pam, is that in, in your reading, it would seem to be almost like a, a drama piece. It, it is something, it's like a performance piece, the, 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 the two you read. I could see it as a, you know, a performance piece as opposed to just a sit down read. I could see you up there doing all that little bit of action thingy. 
you know what's interesting, uh, Maxine? If I if I were a younger person, I might um, try to do a little bit of research on this. There was a lovely Chilean woman in a sort of little literary salon that I was um, listening to yesterday, mm -hmm. and she spoke about this. She spoke about performing her poems, and she said that that is what she does. Mm -hmm. And I kind of got the feeling that 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 is what um, Chilean poets do that they perform i i think maybe it is a cultural thing that is what i would like to do the research about um because i uh, th th there's a, a word i like to use voluble right um i think of jamaicans as voluble people we talk and we you know, we, we are very expressive with our language um most of us i think um and she was saying that um you know that this is this is how she performs her poetry um, Chile, I don't know how close Chile, well, I know how close Chile is to the Caribbean. Um, so I don't think it's, you know, that she's like us in any way, sharing history language or anything like that. But I was very struck by that remark. And in fact, I um, said something to the person who organizes the salons, you know, I said, it's really interesting. Um, or I was going to say, maybe it's a woman thing, but it's, it's not. I mean, people like the, all the dub poets, the slam poets. And something else, um, all of the books in the trilogy are subtitled a performance poem. They mm -hmm. really are meant for performance. And um, George Eliot Clark wrote a wonderful article on the first two in which he, he calls it a plea for performance of these poems. Um, there is a chorus in the Book of Mary. It starts with a Greek style chorus. I mean, never was thinking about no Greek, Greek style chorus, but you have to set it up. It's set up as a um, sort of toss between some men, um, you know, sort of, ah, oh, Johnny, Johnny's here. Hang <laughs> on. Okay, see you. Bye. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. I'm wow. To see you. Unbelievable. So, hi, hi Shani. Everyone is here and Hello. we're all hearing you. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for, I know it was difficult. Thank you. I know it was a long drive. <laughs> thank you, Leah, That's and here. thank you, Ambreen, for trying to help us. And hello, Pamela. Hello, oh, uh, nice Maxine. You, hello, buddy. everybody. Sorry about this. I'm glad to be here. Yes. Glad to have you. <laughs> Thanks. So Pam, Pam just read two of her poems, and we were just looking at... Um, uh, the performance in her poem and then i also just wanted to 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 mention one of the comments from an attendee janet crick where she says the jamaican dialect and creole in general give the characters added dimension that was her co comment right which is which is what we're talking about yes um, um shani shani uses her creole in her writing um yes shani absolutely and I see it. I see it. <laughs> you see what? I see the Creole in your writing. I've been reading it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I I found these um these really interesting um uh, things that were said about you. She writes violence. This is one of the things that I was thinking about you, Pamela. That um you you are not. I am nervous about writing things, and I suppose you might be too. But um but you do. Uh, so someone says uh, that's Alina Stefanescu. She writes violence, sex, love, mothering, God, landscape, colonialism, racism. No subject is off limits. And then Olive Senior says, above all, her wicked humor lift her poetry from the pull of madness to the divine. And, you know, that is what I loved about uh, the red jacket. There was all of these things in there. And I just wonder how you, um, how you manage, how you, how you do it. And, and yeah, just how you do it. I admire it. Oh, thank you, Shani, <laughs> how I do it. Um, yeah. I suppose, as I, I don't know. Um, my sister is here, so I have to be careful of what I say. <laughs> But she, she will tell you that I was a, apparently, when I remember it, um, you know, I know it happened, but um, I guess I was thought, 
I was I was a troublesome child. Um, I had nightmares when I was small and I had terrible temper tantrums and, you know, I don't know, maybe writing was a way of calming myself because I was writing um, from I was quite, you know, poetry from I was quite young, from a teenager. I would like to think it's fairly respectable. But I think, Shani, that as I, um, as I went along in a fairly difficult life, um, because... Yeah, I, I'll just say that, um, you know, I lost my mom early. I like to think of myself as quite close to her. Um, Martin and I had t kids who were um, two kids. They faced mental health challenges. They were both gay men or they are both gay men. Um, that is really, really tough to navigate. It was tough for my sons, right? And I admire them perhaps more than anybody because they have navigated those waters. And I decided early on, I was not going to write pretty poetry. I was not going to write pretty poems. Lots of people would, were doing that and doing it far better than me. And therefore, I was just going to, you know, tackle the things that maybe people don't write poetry about. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking to you and you, you in all the novels that you write, you, you're tackling difficult things you're yes you're... And, and i'm very very nervous about it constantly just before uh, when i'm writing something i'm deeply inside of it and i'm writing uh what feels like my truth and then afterwards i think am i crazy but pamela um what i i i had wanted to say something originally and I'm sorry that I'm, I'm on so late, but I would like to say it. And if it's okay, I would like to read my poem uh, that I'm a little bit nervous about. Um, but what I wanted to say is um, how pleased I am to have been invited by Ancestral Voices and the Richmond Hill Library to participate here, and in particular with my dear friend, Pamela. I'd also like to offer, I don't know if you've already done this, uh, Pam, but uh, may, maybe I can do it. Uh, um, I'd like to offer my sincere sympathies to Maxime and to her family. Uh, Maxime, did you talk about your dad? A bit. Yes. A bit. Thanks, Shani. And I, um, Maxime was telling Pam and me how her father, Major Gordon, was a man who took his duties and responsibilities very seriously and did not shirk them. And I commend Maxime for being here today, just a few days after her dad passed. And I think she's surely uh, taken after her dad. And um, it, this is something for me to emulate. I'm, I'm really, really impressed and moved and I'm sending you all my best. And um, while, being, while being delighted to be here with all of you, and uh, Pam and I uh, want, would like to dedicate this uh, to today's event to the late Major Gordon, to Maxime, and to all of her family. It's a bit Thank late you. in the program, but I hope you will accept that. Not Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's not easy, but um, I'm here because this is what he would have soldiered on. Yes. And so I have to kind of be here, but not here. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, but let's hear your poem. You, uh, sorry. Yes. No. Yes, let's I, hear your poem now. Okay. Um, so yes, you, you had said um you had said something to me when you heard me read this poem uh to you and Pam before that uh um uh, 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 about your dad being um, uh, uh, in the in the in the service of the colonial office at a time and that he may understand what I'm writing yes. and what I'm going to read, I'm about to read. So um, this is my commemoration offer to the recent coronation. It's called England and it's spelled I-N-G-L-A-N, a green and pleasant land. The brown man's quotidian is rich with neverthelesses. There is no mapapi coiled, no scrunched up doubles brown bag discarded beneath the wrought iron bench set just so. 
Yeah, I'm having trouble with the computers here. I'm, we're using different computers here, but okay. So just so amidst tended lawns and topiary, you sit just so composing lines in a book. The sleepy beauty of a weeping willow, sun rippled pond, preening swan. There's even a fountain and it gurgles too in your village green, named after king and queen, human cargo transporter, plantation slave trade slave owner, country carver upper, Victoria Park, Regents Park, Gladstone Park, Grenfell Park Road, Castlan Road Gardens, Colston Hall, Alston Road, Jeffrey Museum, Thomas Picton, also known as the tyrant of Trinidad, bloodstained governor, 1797 to 1803. And he has roads, cities, pubs, community centers named after him throughout the Commonwealth. Immigrant sugar and spice child, you are a forever visitor whose nevertheless prerogative it is to wander through every city nook and country cranny of this precious stone set in the silver sea. In the Lake District, you strutted as if you were Woodsworth himself and recited lines from Tintern Abbey. Monuments ubiquitous, marble plinths, gilded bronze, the winged victory stands upon a globe. The monarch wields her sovereign wand, victory wreaths of Globus Crucigar. She points out to the sea that over there, bring it to me. From one side of the mouth, vocabulary, syntax, grammar. Amount always to the same chair, to the English, to the English. From the other side of the imperial mouth, dribbled on the likes of you, English dominance is over, you. Bronzed lions. Naked youth, flaming torch, empire's heroes tower on stone horses. They watch you come and wonder when you'll go. How dare that brownie, a recalcitrant child who does not, cannot know how to be a grown man. The brownie in general is no freedom fighter, poet, nationalist, politician, teacher, activist. One needs stretch little to understand why you left back home. But there, how come? Some went New York, some reached Toronto, some Miami. The question is therefore begged of what fiber, what constitution, he, she, they, who picked the break and enter nation that trampled our ancestors, plundered national treasures, drained the once affluent subcontinent of $45 trillion, $45 trillion, forced citizens in the middle of the night, of a blackout night, of a blackout night, to get on their knees and crawl through streets, to get on their knees and crawl through streets. Flooded communities caused famine after famine, abetted kidnapping, conned the unguarded into black water crossing, committed mass murder, committed mass murder, committed mass murder. Did you imagine the land of the conqueror would fling wide its arms, a welcome with choice, apologies steeped with blessings and sugar? Did you think they'd put a bandage on the past and gild your future? Every brown man cautions all that bronze, marble, and stone, harbors thanklessness, ignorance, and revenge, to which he's a terrorist who must, warns stone, forever be anesthetized, pacified, civilized. But how svelte you thought yourself, how chic, au courant, when you bought that second television, an above ground pool, the stand up freezer, to garden party standards you mowed and trimmed your iota, bordered it with hollyhocks and bunting, dianthus, delphiniums, peonies and flocks. 
in England's green and pleasant land, your fantasized self perfected in proximity to power. Travels the Canaries, Naxos, Azores, wherever, on holiday shoulder brushing empires and heritage, armies of rallies, Drakes, Burtons, Livingstons, your new blue Brexit passport and the globe between your teeth, Instagramming with your iPhone every yacht, plate of paella de cofio, lemon roasted lamb, chicharros and cosido das furunas. Caught out abroad, leg before wicket, a slap of the thigh, high five and you admit you're Caribbean. Ha! They knew you'd get there in the end, you're Caribbean. Yes, yes, make no mistake, you insist. In the end, you are, you insist, you insist. Well, everywhere but in Britain, a Brit. The tick that sucks the brain. What you would not admit you'd give for a glimpse, just a glimpse, the surprise of who, or how she makes you forget the likes of Diane Dugard. Or him, either will do, behind the wheel. Hey, the corgis on the grounds will suffice. Or the parting of a curtain, an offspring, husband or wife of the offspring, a lady in waiting. You'd recognize them all. Anyone, in fact, who across their body wears the sash. 178 countries invaded and conquered. 700 million subjects colonized in just 200 years. Child of empire, you star in each of those clauses. Yikes. That's it. Well, on the subject of performance, Shani, which you weren't here when we were talking about performing poems, but I would say that you have just made the case for us. Made the oh, case. I don't know what the case was, but. Well, the case was that um, that voluble people, which is what I call them, I call us, we are voluble. Um, we 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 are the, the word in our mouths is always what um, Gordon Roller, the re late Gordon Roller of blessed memory, um, spoke about the word in audible motion, and that is you just put the word into audible motion, right? Um, uh, I have to I think the word in audible motion. I but, think that the word in audible motion is a powerful word. So it's um it's the first time I'm reading it in um, right. at a public event. The two of you heard it first, but yes. uh, this is a public event. It's the first time I'm reading it uh, at something like this, and um, it's it's exhausting. Yes, I well, well, we, have, uh, we have two comments, and I think one is uh, related. Right. To both of you, and it is from, uh, I just moved, Jennifer Walcott. If writing is to be true, it may not be pretty, but it will speak truth to power and the human heart. Uh, thank you both for writing truths. Oh, wow, well, thank you, thank you. Jennifer. And then I have Chris Kayla, hope I am pronouncing it correctly, <laughs> said, wow. I'm just in awe of the language, content, and reading. And Bernadette said outstanding. Heather Shaw said powerful. So it was exhausting to you, Shani, but it hit the right spots. It did what it was supposed yes, to do. Yes. <coughs> and what is interesting, you're both hitting the spots using different approaches to language. You know? I different know. languages, <laughs> but connected. But that's for the literary persons who have the questions out there and the comments to make. So Ashley said moving. So it hit the spots, Shani. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to say no, please, that um, I, I am totally in agreement with everything Shani said about Maxine's bravery. But I have to explain that I got pitched into the pool at the beginning of this. So anything that I might have had to say in that regard, um, I just, you know, like, Shani weren't here. So I had to be swimming by myself. <laughs> I am very, very glad because I was panicked somewhere about 10 minutes ago and thought you might not be able to join us. And um, it didn't show up. So we'll right, keep it quiet. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> 
I am I'm really, really um, glad to be here and I wish I were part of the conversation. Um, one thing that I want to say is that I'm um, um, talking about stories and ancestral voices. I wanted to read this poem for a number of reasons. Um, I felt that in a way I am speaking about ancestry and it comes from my this poem will be in the book that is being published right now by Book Hug called A Witness Day that is really about trying to find that ancestry when you have been removed from your home uh, in, in India and you don't know where that home was, um, there are no records or to go and try to find them is to look for is to look for myths, I think, or something that isn't really yours. When I went to India um, a few years ago, there was no relationship between what I saw there and the people I know in Trinidad who are Indian, who are of Indian background. And um, I, I, I am, it, it led me down a rabbit hole writing this book of poetry to see how we do not have the kind of ancestry that is so old and there's something delicious about it you know it's one of the reasons that i like traveling in places like india and and in europe and so on you see these you see these thousand year old histories and people i remember being in brussels and seeing um, people who had no clue meeting people from uh, belgium who had no clue of what it would mean to be uh, to not know where their great 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 grandparents came from and um, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, so this, this to me was about a, a short way of telling a story and about an ancestral voices in a sense. So I wanted to make that connection through this. And this is what we're trying to, this is the thing. Um, we know that we have history, but we, do we know the history and do we recognize that some of the stories that have been passed on, it's not just sto a story, but the stories may give a little inkling of a bit of history, a little bit of truth. So, yeah. there's so much to say. I know time is going, but it's, it's just what you said, Shani, in terms of that connection between words, writing, history, you know, going back in time, lost time, ignoring something a grandparent may say, thinking it's just, just you know, talking off their mouth and not recognizing that in speaking there was purpose in the speaking. Well, um, do I have a second to say one more thing? Yes. Sure. Okay. Um, so one of the things, oh, but we might want to take questions. Should we take some questions? Let, let me just some comments. Um, it is great yeah. seeing representation in poetry that hasn't always been there with the truth laid bare with colonialism. Someone wants to know where they can get the work of both authors as Bernadette and um, Ambreen has responded with uh, an indication as to where. So the libraries have the books. Um, have Can I say something books, in that regard? Both of your books. I, um, I want to ask the librarians, Ambreen is here, and, yeah. um, and whether it is true that if you go to a library and you ask for a book and the book isn't there, the library will get the book for you. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely correct. This is Ambreen. Yes. So even if there's a title that we don't have or don't carry um, in our catalog, you can request interlibrary loan and we will get it from you. We'll get it for you for from any library in Canada. So that's an interlibrary loan. But if we have the title, you can certainly borrow it from any of our locations and return it at any of the locations. Great. Thanks. Just wanted to say that. Yeah, and that's also another purpose of ancestral voices, getting the books in, getting the interest going so the books can be requested. Oh, I also wanted to say, Maxine, I always think of this, um, the, 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 our cultural icon, Louise Bennett, makes the famous comment, if you don't know where you come from, you can't know where you're going to. Exactly. If you don't know where you come from, you can't know where you're going. One of the things that sort of um, bothers me about uh, like, for instance, like I can tell you, the, the Jamaican New Testament came out in 2012. 
I wrote the book of um, demand in, in 1995, so I was way ahead of them. But anyway, um, there was a fuss about apparently God cannot speak Jamaican language. It is you know, beyond him he, or her. He, 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 God cannot speak Jamaican because there was this fuss. Now, frankly, I thought the whole fuss about Jamaican language and you know where it was appropriate had disappeared somewhere in the 1970s. That's what I thought. So mm -hmm. it, it blows my mind that anybody should be saying it is inappropriate for the New Testament to be translated into Jamaica. As I say, apparently God cannot speak it and we're not going to be able to communicate with God if we're reading out of the New Testament in Jamaican language. Um, I don't know. And then there we go back to Shani's poem. Colonialism. Well, you know, what, what I was going to say is that there is a little twist in this because um, I have been asked many, many times that the, the, the new poetry book that is not, it's not yet published. It's coming out in 2024. It's called Oh Witness Day. Uh, oh Witness Day. Um, the, um, the reason that I ended up writing that, um, it's because I have been asked you know, my work gets written about by academics um, a lot. And one of the questions I keep being asked is, um, what, what did indentureship do to you? But the expectation, the afterlife of the indenture, the expectation is that life begin began for people like myself in the Caribbean, and I suppose in the other, um, um, places where people from India had been sent to replace the ex-slaves is, um, uh, is that we would be downtrodden and we will have lived a life of hell from then to now. And they want the stories. They want the stories. And I, I'm, find, I'm finding it upsetting because we are to remain victims no, no, no matter where we are or how much time has passed. And that is, that is one of the things that I said. I said, let me go looking for my ancestry. Well, you know what? My ancestry is uh, pepper, black pepper, because that is what sent Christopher Columbus looking for this new route. My ancestry is the king and queen of Spain. My ancestry is every is, is Columbus. My ancestry is every African person who died on the crossing, uh, on, the, uh, on the Atlantic crossing. My ancestry is every Taino and Lucania who, who, um, who died as well. Every uh, native person who died in the Caribbean because of that movement of people and that, that uh, colonial history. My ancestry is the British. My ancestry, my ancestry is the king and queen who are, uh, and all the people who are. Who are of us. I need to stop you. I just saw something in the chat that said, that's the title that's of the poem. poem. My ancestry that's yes. is, that's, the, that's why I laughed. That's what? the title can I, what, of Can I just ask, uh, attendees if, if they could just stay on a little bit longer because of the technical issue we had at the beginning if you don't mind and if if shani pam would you mind just staying on a little bit maybe an extra five minutes not at all, not at all. Okay. thank um, you i what, shani, i don't hear what, what it is ancestry is what my ancestry is somebody is saying you should write a poem the title of which is my ancestry is they're suggesting a poem for you to write oh, oh listen it's there it's, okay. the first <laughs> poem in the book. it's the first poem in the book yeah yeah i just saw evelyn o'callaghan and the, the name came up and then it disappeared and yes she, oh, she, she made a comment good point shani as walcott said all of us own the sea and the sea is history oh yes well <laughs> yes absolutely I'm not saying anything new. I mean, he, I, he, I have to say, I, 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 ref, I reference him at the back of the book. And a lot of people who are, who've been doing this work. Well, I think that, um, I think that what is, I think that what is good, I'm a teacher, right? And that's what I was trained to do. And I think that um, when I was in the classroom, nobody wasn't saying nothing like that, right? 
I think it is amazing that, however, maybe people will meet your work for the first time or, you know, other works that are that are saying this, that are identifying this large common ancestry, right? Um, they will see it. They will see something I did not see when I was 18 years old. And I give thanks for that, you know? I give thanks that, that we have got to the point where there are poets, there are writers like you, hopefully in a small way like me too, um, who, who and recognize. It, and, it <laughs> and it won't stop, it won't stop. It must continue and continue. People must write these things right into the future until, until there's more um, equality, equity, everything, you know? But well, my children, my children said to me, um, you know, I am I'm a good teacher, so I know that teachers learn and are on a journey of learning all the time. Um, long ago, so it must have been when they were fairly young. I mean, there are people in their fifties now. Um, mommy, you know, you don't really belong to no place. You, you, we belong to the earth. Earth yeah. is where we belong. So the indeed the ancestry of all of us, all of us have to claim. Yeah. All you know, let's um, get some questions. What what are people say? Are there it's, any it's questions? It's mostly comments, I think. Um, so all I think I've captured all the comments. Uh, okay. Uh, but I just wanted to, Pam, you had said at the beginning that poetry, writing, prose is really about our experiences. And it is important to, to get that out, put that on paper, speak it, I guess is what you, 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 know, you were leading up to. Um, I have one more comment. Thank you all. From, this is from Timothy. I'm going to pronounce it rice. Thank you all for a wonderful, moving and fruitful reading and discussion. Love to all. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, um, look, I, I was quoting somebody else. I was quoting, um, you know, Borges, if that's the right way, maybe I, I'll check my sister when I'm done. And um, and Toni Morrison, who be, I think what they were saying is that the pain, the distress, the trauma, you have to have to feed into the stories. Um, one way of dealing with everything that Shani just described, all the horrors the whole colonial experience is um, is is just to 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 do what she has just done, which is to to get back at it in the writing. Um, I don't really like the idea. Uh, there's a question, Maxine. I just saw it pop yes. up. In the text. Yes. Well, Betty Wilson says thanks to all of us. Um, I think some of us know Betty Wilson. And um, here's a question for both Pam and Shani. Have you ever been asked to tone down any of your work for it to be sellable or play trauma up? So. Johnny, that one is for you. Uh, you know, I'm kind of wondering about this book, uh, uh, or oh, Witness Day, if uh, what what's going to happen with it, because it's... But, but, you know, people have written hard things before, so... So I don't know. I don't know. And I don't really care. But I have in, in when I wrote um, He Drowned She in the Sea, I had been asked by an editor, in fact, to um, not make um, the main character such a sad man who stayed in Trinidad. No, no, he actually he left Trinidad. I don't even remember my work from so long ago. It's gone. I'm on to something else, you know. But he left Trinidad. And what she wanted and came to Canada. And so a lot of the story then takes part in Canada. And what that editor wanted me to do was to put him back in Trinidad and have him take care of his mother there. In Canada, he finds love. Um, he find he is able to make something of himself, his own wishes and so on. And, and he left because his mother died. She said to me, keep his mother alive and, um, and have him there taking care of her and show what that would be like back home, my, my back home. And I refused to do it. I just thought, no, you don't want us out. You don't want us out. And this is a Canadian publisher who uh, editor who'd, who'd said that. 
So I had my agent um, uh, let, um, let go of that contract and find me another publisher. Mm -hmm. I could not do that. So that's an angle on what the question. Okay, and I just realized that um, I was going to say, you know, uh, not not so much me, um, but the there's a comment in um, a fair screen place, uh, a wonderful, wonderful poet of maybe maybe the next generations, not two generations though, um, named Tanya Shirley, whose work you absolutely, absolutely should read because she's amazing um she wrote the editors thought um that uh, she sort of <laughs> came came somehow um in in, in a line uh, that our work was aligned um in in this way i would like to think she treats she treats difficult subjects in the poetry too she does not shy away from you name it she's on it um but this is what tanya says tanya wrote the afterward in this book and she says in Mordecai's exploration of violence, particularly the neo-colonial sexual trauma inflicted upon black women by black men, is there a heaviness that as Caribbean people, we are not ready to confront? Does the female sensibility of Mordecai's work dangle too precariously outside the margins of acceptable social norms? So I guess, look, um, as I said somewhere recently, um, two influences on me, Louise Bennett Coverley, because I grew up with her poems in my mouth. I can still recite some of them. But Louise was a lady, but Louise was a lady. Louise gave me Creole. She gave me permission. Write in your language, fam. Come on, Brathwaite said. Write in your language and use, just, just be as bad behave as you need to be. So don't, I don't know if this will be bleeped out, but if you need to say Say, if you need to say Ross, say Ross. You are free. You are entirely free. You are dealing with violent, ugly things. Mm -hmm. And it is very hard to speak of violence. How do you speak of rape unless, you know, unless you convey the trauma of a, of a person who is raped? I just finished reading Serious Blooms at Night. Um, and Shani is dealing with stuff, right? Um, you, you don't deal with that kind of thing is politely well but think of um like uh i'm no pain like this body harold sunny ladue's book which was just made into a vintage classic book uh, last year or year before uh, uh, and you know there was a big bocas uh event around um christopher laird's book about uh harold sunny ladue's uh work life and work and um now there's a man who wrote in a way that no Caribbean person was writing at the time, the, the kind of language and no pain like this body, man, that was pain in every single way. And yet it was a vital, vital, vital work at the time. And it still is because of, um, of the many truths that it told that we don't want to hear about. But for me, reading that book, I, I, that book has influenced me a great, great deal, actually. No, I haven't read it yet. You must, you must. No, no, no pain like this body. It's a great work. I know it's a great work. I still have lots of books to read, Shani. Not a lot of time in which to read them. <laughs> anyway. Yes. anyway um, yeah. I, I am glad to be on with you again. It's a wonder and a marvel. <laughs> or oh, somebody's saying something about Yeah, you. just have a couple of comments. One yeah. from Zana. This was truly an amazing experience really enjoyed the speaking about the colonial experience and how it is still so interwoven into present day societies uh bernadette wants you to name that book uh, i think we need to state that that book has not yet been oh yeah uh, yes me um me yeah me, she said can, can shani please name that book i'm not sure if it's the yeah. um oh, okay so just now i was talking about no Pain Like This Body by Harold Sonny Ledoux. And if you were asking about my book, it will yes. come out next year. And it's called O Witness Day. And it's O-H, Witness, and it's D-E-Y with an exclamation mark in the kind of way, you know, we say, hey, neighbor day. So yeah. O Witness Day. If, but it'll come out next year. And Karen Lee commented, Serious Blooms is one of my favorite books of all time. 
Thank you, Pam and Shani, two of you in the same room. It's like, ooh, Viola Davis and Cicely Tyson in the same shot <laughs> on how to get away with murder. Fire! <laughs> Thank you, Maxine. I'm sorry, you're grieving. Thank you, everyone, for your well wishes. Um, Chris says, thank you so much for this. And from SR, no pain like this body, a novel by Ladu, Harold, Sonny. Uh, Michael A. Bogner, great event, enjoyed both writers. And Bernadette said, the one that she had to change. Oh, I think um, the book is the one that, Shani, you had to change with your agent's help. Oh, the name oh, of that book. Um, 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 he drowned she in the sea. He drowned she in the sea. He drowned she in the sea. I hope Bernadette got that. Yeah. So any final words before we sign off? Any final comments? Okay. <laughs> Wrapping up? <laughs> I know that's probably not the question to ask because I know we could go on forever because this is just, this has been so much fun, so exciting, so informative. Are you asking us? Are you asking yes, if you have any final words. And I'm kind of throwing it out as well to the attendees. Well, uh, my final word is, um, first of all, I want to mention also that Shani lost her dad, Romesh Mutu, about four months four ago. Months. Our sympathies go to her. And he was another great man, a vital, vital, absolutely wonderful person who sort of made San Fernando into what it is today. Um, yes. And so, you know, two two important ancestors, ancestral voices. So anything we're saying is is an echo of those um, of those persons Thanks who so. have gone before. Um, I like to think the cross is a wonderful symbol for me. One of the reasons being that we tend to think of community as all of us together now. But to go back to what Shani was saying, it's it's a cross. It's an, we live at the intersection of those who have gone before and those who are with us now, you know? Yes. Uh, what I want to say is uh, my four parrots are very, very noisy and I think you might be hearing them, right? No. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> and, and I just want to say that when we prepared for this meet, this event, the three of us realized that we had loved ones who we had fairly recently lost. So Pam has not mentioned Martin, but, and I think Pam, that was two years ago, three years ago, two, two, but two years ago, but I still, you know, when it, when it, it comes to loved ones, it's never a long time away. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. okay. So thank you very much. Absolutely wonderful. I think we have lost Pam somehow. Or is she back? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, attendees. Thank you so much.